Welcome back to Let's Play Lost War Chronicles. Canada の山林部にて、友軍の偵察部隊が識別不能の大型機動兵器と遭遇。多大な被害を受けました。混戦したパイロットの話では、対モビルスーツ戦を想定したと思われる特殊な電磁兵器を使用するようです。残念ながら、実際に混戦した機体は損傷が激しく、詳細な情報が引き出せませんでしたが、専門家の分析では外装表面温度が 4,000 度を超える超高温にさらされた形跡があるそうですモビルスーツによる実践データの収集という我が隊本来の目的に基づき今回のミッションはこの兵器との交戦撃破が目標となります撃破成功後は撤退も許可されていますがこの戦闘区域では他にもさまざまな未確認兵器の目撃情報があります仮にそういった兵器との接触があった場合は情報収集のためできる限り撃破を目標として戦闘を継続してくださいIt's pretty lame, actually. It's very slow. It's got heavy armor. I'll say that much. You're gonna have a lot of life to work with. I think. You know, assuming you don't get into proximal attacks too much. Actually, no. Even if you do get into proximal attacks, you won't take that much damage. Because these things are... Well, they're a tank. Thus, the name Gun Tank. Problem is, you really can't take anything on at close range. That's its main disadvantage. I mean, even if you do a switch to the proximal weapon button, it really only switches out one uh, of. It really only switches out the Bob missiles for machine guns. So, there's that. One thing I'm not too clear on this game. It, it, in regards to its controls is whether or not it has the same interesting combo moves you can do with the proximal attacks that there were in Jerry Jaburo, such as the heavy cross slash and things like that. I've usually never had much reason to try it try that out, though, so yeah. Um, sounds like Anish is having a bad time. Oh, which reminds me, uh, this time around I was smart enough to open some wiki pages so that I can know the names of some of these guys. Call them and whatnot. Uh, the name of the Fed pilot we're supposedly playing as is Matt Healy. Yeah. Interesting. And, uh... While the events of the manga have really nothing to do with this game, it, I'm thinking they were kind of writing the manga to coincide with it anyway. I don't know. According to this, the release date for the video game... The normal and limited edition was originally on August 8th, 2002. The mangas... let's see... The mangas began releasing around October 2002 and kept going through to, December, to September of the next year. So yeah, the game came first, that's... at least that much is true. 
And I'm guessing the manga just took uh, sort of missions and characters from the game and just assembled them and there it goes. Is that Larry or Anish? I don't know. I also mentioned before that Anish was a bit of a jerk. I should stand a little bit corrected about that. Anish is actually not a very bad guy. At least until, you know, let Larry Bradley's death. Yeah, I can finally get their last names now. Their names are Anish Lofman and Larry Radley. That's Anish talking right there. Larry is the sort of older looking guy. Actually, how old is he? 28. Wow. <laughs> he looks like shit. Oh, I forgot. We were totally taking out a... What is that thing called? <laughs> Here I am trying to get all sorts of information on this stuff, and I'm not even paying the slightest attention. Uh... Annie Brevig? I think her name is? I don't know how to pronounce this. It's very odd spelling. And... Okay, that's not bad. レーチェルミルスティン注意です。どうぞよろしくね。上層部に掛け合って最新の装備をもらってきたわ。少しはお役に立てるかしら。It's odd. It's not listed on the wiki page at all. Oh well. Oh, and that was a uh, Rachel Milstein. Huh. Well, she. ディオンの機密情報の奪取に成功した我が軍の諜報員とそれの保護に成功した友軍部隊が敵の必要な追撃を受け暇屋山中に逃れたところで消息を絶ちました同地点にて展開中の敵部隊が確認されていることから友軍
I'm sorry, my directions are not doing well now. Northeast corner. Sorry. Jeez, I am a halfway. Unfortunately, that's not the way it's been for me for a while. Usually he's just in whatever random corner of the map. Hello, lag. I don't need you. Some random corner of the map where you have to go looking for him. Unfortunately, because I went to the wrong corner, the Zeke's got to him first and he's losing... I'm about to lose him. I don't get there quick enough. Ah, I done goof. I can't get up there in time to save him, so unfortunately I have to retry. Some brain trust I am. He is up in this corner, and one thing that should make it obvious is you go over, you scan each corner on the map screen, and apparently this area already has been highlighted, which means there's something... which means that's pretty much where he is. So, big fucking clue. I <laughs> don't know why I did that, didn't do that before. I just like the overall design of the ground type gun. I, I, I really can't pinpoint every little detail I like about them. What makes me enjoy them so much. I just do. Don't like it? Sue me. <laughs> He should be here. One thing I find particularly annoying about the design of this particular iteration of the ground type Gundam is for some strange reason they decided to put the Earth Federation Space Force logo on his shield. This is a ground type only machine. Why would this thing have a label for the Earth Federation's Space Force design? I mean, granted, it's, you know, something generic, and you don't want to just have the actual team number on the mobile suit itself. But I mean, for Christ's sakes, this is not a space bound mobile suit! Another thing I particularly like about the ground, well, ground type Gundams is that. Oh, no, no, that's a dog. It's the 100mm machine gun, which I feel seems to be a little misrepresentative. Mis mis uh, yeah. Underrepresented in video games. Primarily because it seems more often than not that if you want to get anything done competently, you have to do it with beam weapons. And I get that. I really do. But I just prefer machine guns overall to any type of, you know, laser weaponry. And I'm actually kind of glad that the machine gun does have some pretty good use in this game. It wouldn't seem like it does, but there is a benefit to having machine gun over any other given weapon. Because any other weapon that hits a lot harder than a machine gun will actually cause stun damage. Now, when an enemy mobile suit is stunned, like when it falls over or it stumbles or whatnot, there's a sort of delay time between before you can actually start damaging them again. Now, a machine gun doesn't cause all that much damage with each individual shot, so there's no there's no stun to take into account. So you can just keep rapid firing to keep their uh, health enemies health meter going down constantly and consistently. Whereas here, you would have to fire. Whereas with any other weapon, you would have to fire, pause, fire again, pause, fire again, and pause 
you know, repeatedly over and over until the enemy was dead. This is also particularly interesting. <sighs> Distracting during, like, proximity when you're trying to take an enemy in hand to hand because if they're stunned while you're trying to hurt them with the beam saber or heat weapon or whatever, it won't do as much damage. One of the ways to tell when an enemy is either stunned or completely undamageable at a certain time is to look at a lock-on indicator. If it's green, it's easy to take... It's, you can actually do some decent damage to them. If it's yellow, you're not gonna do much. And if it's orange, better hold off and not waste ammunition. Yeah, we finally escorted this guy to safety. Finally. Yeah, that's the heavy attack right there, which will set them in yellow. Basically, the heavy attack's only there to make sure that the enemy won't be shooting at you anytime soon. Come on, you stupid fuck. There. Thank you, whoever did that. Yeah, thank you, Anish. But, uh, that, that mission done and over with. I'm distracted by these wiki pages, so you'll forgive me for not really being as informative as I can while I'm trying to be. Uh, the other redhead is called... Oh. Her, that's, uh, Noah, her name is Noel Anderson. What I can gather from this wiki page. Finally, the long-range radar. Make my life easier now. Uh, no clue what she said there, but I heard the word present. So I'm hoping it's a good thing. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll see you next time on this Let's Play. And hopefully I'll be less distracted then. <laughs>